Welcome back to the Word in the World podcast, where we bring you topics, talk, and truth. Everything from the news to the New Testament. What's good? What's going on? Happy New Year. Yes, yes. You can still say that, I think. Yeah. What is it? You get like a week to yes. say that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you got to. Wednesday. Oh, hold up, brother. Oh, you can't just be told. Yeah, oh, my bad. I, thought, I, thought I guess we got to go ahead and start my introducing bad. who that Oops. is. Cut. Hey, Before man. His time, yeah, I know. Just jumping jump in, in the gun, boy. Uh, that's uh, Y'all familiar with Pastor G? He's been on past episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, he had one. He had one episode, right? Yeah, I thought it was multiple. It feels like, like it, was, just, but it was, yeah. but it was one because it was, it was, we were on here for a while, I think. Yeah, but my Jason, spirit was just here, so you just resonate oh my god <laughs> true apostolic <laughs> so you gotta bring him in jay you gotta tell people yeah uh this is pastor gregory wardlow jr mm. uh nah this is my pastor uh actually marcus uh introduced me to him um a few months ago almost a year maybe and um uh he inherited a new church in district heights maryland the Amazing lighthouse on story. the pike amazing story yeah the story is is a great testimony of just how god uh will just make a way from you mm -hmm. wake make a way he'll just smooth your path and and you look up and man you'll be somewhere that you never thought you would be um so yeah if you guys go back and check out the episode with it's called uh i think it's called an open conversation with pastor g mm -hmm. Uh, go check that out and you'll hear his testimony and more about him. But he is joining us for this uh, uh, part of this series to jump it off, the 52 question series. Yep, yep. So if you're not familiar with the 52 question series, we are going to be answering a question every single week. Yeah. And so, but those questions are coming from our listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it should be an exciting time this year. Yeah. And, uh, we invite you guys to give us feedback on the post and send us your questions we already got a few coming in so um, we're excited you know yeah. about what's going on and another thing to announce uh we are actually recording video right now i know we've been talking about it probably for a year yeah of like yo we coming we gonna be on youtube <laughs> we gonna, we gonna, ooh, ooh, ooh. but yo we're we actually doing it now so um this episode i don't know how i don't know if we've even figured out like when we're gonna post the video where and all that type of stuff but the video is ready and it will be out with this episode yep. and beyond. Yep. And who so, better to have on the show? Yes, sir. Than Pastor G. Yes, sir. Hashtag just Greg. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> At just Greg. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, we, um, we, Marcus had this dope idea to, um, basically engage you guys more, um, and to kind of, uh, have, a way to address like pertinent questions in I guess you could say modern uh Christianity and stuff like that. Yeah. Um and I guess you know um uh just general questions that are uh worthy of answering in any age of Christianity. Um so for the next 52 weeks for the whole year, if you don't know that 52 weeks is in a year then you need to go <laughs> somewhere <with it>. but <laughs> We're going we're gonna to do questions, um, and hopefully what our, what our desire is, is to uh, pull all of those questions from you guys. Um, but if not, we have a whole bunch of questions that we've been sitting on and uh, episodes that we've been sitting on that we haven't done. So um, we just really want your engagement and feedback and all of that type of stuff, and we're just hoping that uh, you get some clarity on some, some issues and stuff like that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir uh so this first episode we are starting um with something i guess kind of eh, how can i say is it is it easy or is it is this like a how am i trying to say is this like a surfacey yeah, type of question it's, it's not a, a deeper thing do people already know this like is that what you mean like like do people already kind of know the answer to this or well i guess how what i want to say is like mm -hmm. it seems like a question that is easy to answer like oh yeah christian y'all you could drink yeah why yeah. not jesus G like somebody commented uh jesus first miracle was wine you know and that's the thing you hear a lot like jesus right. drink wine and, right but you there's a lot to talk about when it comes to drinking eating mm -hmm. whatever you want to talk about um yeah so yeah it may seem like an easy kind of surfacey 
type of topic, but mm. it's some substance to it, you know? Yeah, for sure. But I think you also have to consider, I guess, the fact that, like, people can get mistaught about this too. Mm-hmm. And people also introduce, you know, like arguments that are not necessarily biblical arguments, you know, but like a lot gets thrown into this conversation, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it, it really kind of depends on like how you were brought up, what you were told, you know, whether or not you were a part of a heavily traditional church, mm-hmm. you know, in, in some senses. So I think having this conversation is still, because you know, like my personal story is like I was in churches where it was like forbidden. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And but it wasn't until, you know, I'm, I'm here. I am about to give the answer, but like yeah. it wasn't until I was in, you know, uh, a place where I was like literally studying and reading the Bible where it just it just didn't make sense what I had heard anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I still think it's a necessary conversation. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we get started and really start digging in. Um, I just wanted to read a few of the responses we got oh, yeah. when we posted uh, last night. Um, so, at Cedric Shine says, of course, all things are in moderation, though it's clear the word frowns on drunkenness and gluttony of meat. Um, when you're too sauced, you become vulnerable to terrible decisions. So, again, all things in moderation. <laughs> he says sauced? He says sauced. <laughs> what's like up, Ced? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. That's my guy. <laughs> sauced uh wait patiently for him yes but if alcohol is a trigger for you one glass of wine leading to 10 then refrain from drinking altogether mm. uh and then ama uh at ama Oasua, um she made a lot of points and i'm not gonna read the whole thing you guys can click on um the uh post that we made and just check out the comment section with because we got a lot of uh responses but one of the most interesting things that she said uh is that scripture says that if you're somewhere and it's making others around you and she put in parentheses all believers uncomfortable then don't do it to keep the peace so i found that answer pretty interesting too yeah because um, there's scripture that echoes that same sentiment so mm. i guess we could start off with our <laughs> esteemed guest uh, i don't know who that person <laughs> is <laughs> So, um, but gee, what's what's your perspective yeah, on this whole can a Christian drink alcohol? Um, just piggybacking off something that you guys have already mentioned, uh, particularly Marcus, mm-hmm. um, in regards to it really depends on your background, your upbringing, uh, what church you come from, what mm-hmm. their teachings are. Um, I, I'll say this first. One thing that we currently do wrong today, and, and I mean we just as readers of the Bible, uh, we have to, if we read our Bible and immediately look at it and try to uh, grab some type of application from it mm-hmm. um, in modern day today, then we're probably... 10 times out of 10 guilty of misinterpreting the text Uh, mm -hmm. meaning that before we can grab any application from it we must look at who the writer was who he was writing writing to what was the reason they were writing Mm -hmm. meaning that we have to explore the text within its own uh, context and time um, culture geography etc etc yeah so there was an intent on why the writer wrote what he wrote to whom he was writing it to. Right. And we must find that out first. Yeah. And after we do some digging and find out what that was, then we can put some application to it for us today. Mm-hmm. But if we do the application part first, we could be very wrong in yeah. applying it. So what is the real issue on why Paul was talking to um this particular group of people about drunkenness and Mm -hmm. wine particularly Mm -hmm. wine was something that they drank often in that region so Mm -hmm. for the people who make the argument with jesus drank i never see anywhere where jesus actually drank i do see him Mm -hmm. doing the miracle where he changed wine but Mm. i think i could be wrong but jesus had taken a nazarite vow where he wouldn't taste any wine either Mm -hmm. so but interesting where they were from they didn't necessarily have drinking water like you and I have now and filtration systems. So mm. 
uh, depends on where they got the water from, like things. So wine was common mm-hmm. for them to drink. We see Paul telling Timothy, well, drink some wine for your stomach. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was going on with Timothy? It's, the, the text seemed to suggest that he had some type of ailment like and the wine thing. was to fix it. So, yeah. hmm. I mean, we can have fun with all of that stuff. Yeah. And that's not me giving my opinion one way or another. I'm just stating that, you know, when when it comes to examining our Bible, we must first examine it within its context. They're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before we can grab some application from it, hmm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which would cause a little bit of work for us to do yeah. um, as yeah. readers. Yeah, you're trying to make us read. <laughs> yeah. Like, who wants to do that? <laughs> <laughs> it makes you work. <laughs> because your initial instinct is to. Uh, is to like put sin category yeah no sin category you know like well watch this so if we just took the bible literally for what we read Mm -hmm. so it says don't get drunk off wine right right. can i get drunk off hennessy yeah right because it don't say hennessy it just says wine (laughs) that's true (laughs) yeah okay can can i have beer can i get drunk off beer right or maybe i want kvassi i mean you see what i'm saying yeah so why does it just say wine Mm -hmm. um or Mm -hmm. is it or or is the context in what it's saying Mm -hmm. is something greater yeah some some verses what is it proverbs that says strong drink strong drink like what does that mean strong drink or strong so that That means that it was cider that's fermented too long yeah so is Hmm. it a weaker drink you know so Hmm. those are just little fun little things but i mean we would do ourselves a disservice not to ask those particular questions and examine it in that context first Mm -hmm. yeah um and then maybe see what we can grab out of it yeah right but do we do we see anywhere i guess like in the world where it is like strictly forbidden you know, is there like a, is there anywhere I can look where it's going to say like, do not, you know, like outside of, I guess, like the Nazarite vow, like you brought up or priests entering the temple or the meeting place. Yeah. You know? Other other than that, no. Okay. And oftentimes we never see it forbidding somebody to drink mm-hmm. more than it is forbidding or speaking against drunkenness right? mm, okay. and what drunkenness causes a person. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that gives anybody a pass to just go drink i'm just right. we're just stating what the bible says and what it doesn't mm-hmm. because we haven't actually extrapolated any uh particular uh uh um actions for us but, right. but just yeah. looking at what the text says or what it doesn't say okay okay application that's the word yeah. I'm, i've heard people kind of uh walk that line too like well what is drunkenness you know like <laughs> is it is it is drunkenness a reference to alcoholism like you know in its general sense or are we really talking about like me getting up to my line like of just past tipsy you know now and I'm now drunk. now i'm drunk like yeah, I, I, am I, I teetering that line all night you know <laughs> like if, if you're inebriated <laughs> at any level you're inebriated yeah. like yeah. you know so whether you know you the guy or the girl and they, they say oh i can handle wine like dude, yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if you're drunk if your alcohol level is at a certain point or right yeah it has now influenced any type of your feelings mood and or thoughts yeah. like, <laughs> you're, you're drunk yeah, yeah. <laughs> true so that kind of leads to the question of like why you know like why why is because we start to see this pattern of like don't get drunk don't be drunk on wine be sober minded things Mm -hmm. like that like what do you what do you think the significance of that is well if we're so like one particular uh more popular text about Mm -hmm. the drinking wine um we find in ephesians chapter 5 i think it's 17 verse 17 or 18 or whatever um where paul talks to this church and he tells them hey don't be drunk off wine yeah but be filled by the spirit hmm. or filled with the spirit mm-hmm. again like now we have to ask some questions yeah I, I i simply call it the who what when where and why so okay. who was talking and who was he speaking to mm-hmm. obviously this church in ephesus yeah uh what was the reason for him talking to them about this particular thing? They must um, have been doing some drinking. They must have been doing some drinking. Yeah. <laughs> but if, and, and and I don't want to quote the source because I don't remember it. And I'm just thinking just off the top of my head. But just me reading something historically about this this region. Mm-hmm. If I be- Don't quote me on ever hearing this. But it had something to do with 
this church also at one time was, you know, they, they, they were non-believers. They had mm -hmm. pagan beliefs and things that they did. Yeah. And now they incorporated some of this stuff into this new Christianity. Something like, you know, kind of like we do. We I try see. to bring a lot of our old worldly values and yeah. try to make it in, implement it in the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I remember correctly, some of their worship practices mm -hmm. involved wine and some other things that would cause them to get high. Okay. Or something, and it would make them feel like they were closer to these gods uh, you know or whatever mm -hmm. so wow. if this in fact is true yeah and if just maybe what paul is saying is yeah don't get drunk off wine mm -hmm. like or in other words you don't have to yeah uh become inebriated to feel some type of spiritual uplifting like you're wow. more of a spiritual being yeah. wow and now watch the contrast we read it in English because we have to have perfect sentences, uh -huh. but how about don't be drunk off wine, just be filled mm. with the spirit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then A, B, C, D, yeah. so forth, so forth. So wow. I think maybe Incredible. he may just be presenting an argument to this group of people yeah. that's used to practicing something a certain way and they're now they're trying to implement that in their Christian practices. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. That's an awesome breakdown of Which the text. completely yeah. changes like now what we're viewing yeah. when we're reading this because the argument really isn't about <coughs> wine within itself or yeah. any type of other strong drink or whatever word you want to use about mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. more than it is about that you don't have to do all of these external things hmm. to feel closer all you need to be is just filled with the yeah, spirit that pleasure that you're looking right for, you so know, just like you become God. inebriated or like i just got a buzz mm -hmm. like now I'm, I'm feeling good like no yeah. you can feel good with spiritual feeling right yeah. so just be filled like you wow. don't even have to drink the spirit because he dwells in us yeah mm -hmm. just be just be him by itself is enough wow it's and all the inebriation that you would need. When you ask that, uh -huh. I think it, what I was about to say goes hand in hand. Proverbs 20 and 1 says, wine is a mocker, mm. strong drink, a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. And I think this mm. whole idea of sobriety, you know, yeah. being of sober mind, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. fruit of the spirit is self-control. Right? Yeah, yeah. So drinking wine, drunkenness are things that lends itself to not being in control, uh, in control right. you know? Uh, you know, and the psalmist is always talking about don't be led astray. Proverbs, don't be led astray. Yeah. Don't look to the right or the left. Yeah. So it's this idea of, for, and we have to remember, like, the Bible is written for Christians. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. these are instructions to us to, like, stay on the clear path. Keep your mind yes. sharp. Be, yes. sound, be of yeah. sound mind, the right. word talks about. And any kind of drunkenness, whether it be from shopping too much or mm. you know eating too much food getting the itis and now you you know you can't have a conversation you're supposed to have because yeah. you inebriated off food you know like <laughs> right, drunkenness right. that's gonna lead you astray yeah but this i feel like because uh we were talking about this earlier we're reading proverbs and like you know the promiscuous woman is used a lot to talk mm. about a folly that right. men run into mm -hmm. sexual immorality talks yeah. about the woman of wisdom and the woman of folly yeah, yeah. yeah. and like why did they choose that well maybe because like that is just a, a, the epitome of being drawn away from you know your marriage a man and just it could wreck your life and yeah. it leads to death the word says so i think with wine and you know it's one of those things you apply this drunkenness mindset and state that is like nah christians we're not supposed to be like that right yeah. but also wine does literally make you drunk yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it does and and which is the other part of it uh that and you hit it you hit the nail right on the head um because it's about not being controlled right by anything the only yeah. thing that we should have that should have mastery over mm -hmm. us is the lord through the holy spirit mm -hmm. so like you don't again you don't have to take this outward substance to put inside you to feel a certain way if you just feel it with the spirit like yeah that's who we want to be ultimately in control not um you know the substance of whatever that may yeah. be um, so it kind of moves it shifts from like this question of like can i to like should i yeah you know and really being able to that's what uh, alma was talking about too uh, i'm gonna go back to and, and, and why he finds that comment yeah i, I would and, and i would put still put a disclaimer on it mm -hmm. um because he, here's here's what it's ultimately going to boil down to mm -hmm. 
um, there are some people, um, Christian, mm-hmm. that have and still struggles with alcoholism or right. being addicted to drugs. Yeah. Um, so whatever we conclude here, whether it's yes or no or whatever is your own conviction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that happens to be your issue, yeah. here's the bottom, here's the ultimate answer to this question. Mm-hmm. If al- if you drinking wine or drinking strong drink, whatever that may translate for you, mm-hmm. uh, is an issue for you, mm-hmm. then the answer is immediately no. Right. Right. It's yeah. that no, you shouldn't drink. Yeah. And that's whether you're Christian or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so if you know if you've been I got four DUIs or yeah. you, every time you drink you become drunk. And you mm. get into fights, mm-hmm. like yeah. no, that doesn't uphold our Christian values on how you should act, and that's definitely not portraying Christ. So the answer immediately would be no, yeah. you shouldn't drink. So you got to know your vices. You yeah, know. Abs- absolutely. Okay. And likewise, yeah, I want to go to Romans fourteen, and it's it's a lot, and I'm not even going to start from the beginning. But um, Paul is talking about contrasting per- a person of weaker faith, yes, who is yes. in the faith, but they're of weaker faith when it comes to eating things sacrificed to idols this was something back then and drinking wine and stuff and if you go down to verse uh, 13 he says therefore let us not judge one another anymore but rather determine this not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way Mm. Uh, you go down a little bit it says in 15 uh, for because of food your brother is hurt you are no longer walking according to love right do not destroy with your food him for whom Christ died um, and he's just talking about how even though you know you can do something, mm-hmm. if I'm with Marcus and he's like, man, that's messing me up right now. I don't, I don't really know about that. For his sake, I shouldn't do it around him. Yeah. Absolutely. So going back to Amma's comment, this is what she was kind of alluding to is like, if I know somebody got a drinking problem, yeah, I'm not going to drink around them because right. it may cause them to stumble and be like, oh. And furthermore, back to your text, if, if you're around somebody of a weaker faith, so... I'm new in Christ, like, and my perception of this is like, hey, like, I thought we wasn't supposed to drink. Right? Yeah. Now, m- me being me, and I know, well, sure, I can drink as no sin, whatever, as long as I don't get drunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would be doing you a disservice as right. the one in weaker faith is what Paul's saying. So now, me drinking, yeah, because the stumbling doesn't mean that you cause that person to go drink. Like, no, mm-hmm. no like, now I'm causing you to fall away from the faith yeah. because you're confused. Because right. So it's better for me yeah. not to drink in front of you at all or in that particular context. It was yeah. about eating meat, mm-hmm. which, again, which is something else that we would have to explore yeah. because you and I don't live in a... Uh, a, a, a place where people are sacrificed, where we're eating meat that was sacrificed to idols. Right? Yeah. So again, that would be again one of those texts that we would have to explore in this context, yeah. and then we can pull out like you know what would be applicable for us yeah. based off of what we discovered already. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna go down to 21 and then wrap that up as far as this verse. So, okay. uh, Romans 14:21, guys, it is good not to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything yeah. by which your brother stumbles. Again. Mm. Yeah. This is take it in context. Yes. Yeah. The faith which you have, have as your own conviction before God. Right. Happy is he who does not condemn himself mm. in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith, mm. and whatever is not from yes, faith is sin. Yes, yeah. sir. Wow. Yeah. So that's the whole point. Like yeah. you may cause somebody to do something that they ultimately don't want to do. But since brother elder, you know, Pastor Greg is saying, no, 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 you could drink. Yeah. When you feel like, I didn't, ah, say, I don't, that. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. When you feel in your spirit <laughs> and your conscience is convicting you, hey, you shouldn't drink. Yeah. yeah. It's sin if you drink. Yeah. And, and and really because like now you you become convicted of your own um, consciousness. Yeah. Um, you become your own convictions can it also serves to be a judge for you too as well. Yeah. Because there may be some things that here it is, it's not biblically written. But just with just everything within you, the, the, the Holy Spirit is pulling you away from doing certain mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And again, it's not even a question about whether or not it's in the Bible. This now becomes your own personal conviction yeah. between you and God. And like now you do it. Yeah. Not in faith, confused uh, because you saw me do it. Mm-hmm. That's a sin for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so but again, but for but then for it be, because it's my own conviction. Mm doesn't mean that i get to preach my convictions on the other people as right, well right something is i'm not even gonna bring it up but yeah it's, <laughs> you're it's, not gonna bring it up it's too late <laughs> um you guys are reminding me of a story uh 
we we had like a date night type of a thing mm -hmm. we went out to granite city steakhouse over at the harbor Okay. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's Big right. Money. That's, you know, <laughs> so, money, uh, man, okay. <laughs> but like we, uh, we sitting at the table, right? And it's uh, three couples and um, I hadn't seen my, my man for a long time. And he knows that I kind of went through like this, this change after coming to Christ and everything. And so, you know, the waiter comes over and he's like, hey, can I get any drinks for you guys? And I thought about it, like yeah. knowing that he was in yeah. the position that he was in. I thought about it. I was like, I probably shouldn't do this. Mm. But Hey, everybody's about to have a drink like that, right? So, order my drink. It comes, and I'll never, I'll never forget this moment. It's like he looked at me. He was like, "Ah, you drinking too?" He was like, "So we the same." He yeah. literally Ooh. said that out of his mouth. Right, mind. right. Yeah. And I, I, you know, like that stuck with me. Yeah. I mean, it's still with me to this day. Yeah. You know, but it's like something I'll never forget. Him being like, "Yeah, we still the same, man." Yeah, yeah. yeah but we're so not like, the same. We're not. We're but not. just yeah. that little thing right there just completely just killed your witness yeah your witness. And, and, exactly. and it wasn't a matter of whether or not it was right or wrong right it, but it becomes wrong it wasn't the right yeah. thing to do then yeah. when it's the wrong thing to do yeah yeah, yeah. like having that conviction and then yeah. denying the conviction mm -hmm. and doing what i wanted to do anyway yeah that made it wrong yeah you know so we were all at uh marcus house for uh his birthday the other night and i wasn't invited Thanks for telling Master me. Master G was not invited. I don't Thanks think for you telling me. About next time. Next time. I, wasn't invited. Got I, had, I had no time. invite duties, though. <laughs> Neither uh, did I. It was supposed to be I mean, a surprise. Okay. Was, I, I yeah, he ruined the surprise. It's too. okay. But, like, <laughs> I wasn't invited. So, <laughs> <laughs> you got to earn your invite, brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is your conscious speaking. <laughs> so, like, he wasn't invited. Pretty much everyone there was drinking, and we were having a good time. And for the most part, as far as I know, everyone was a believer. You should really feel um, bad. He wasn't invited, and you yo, were drinking. he's tight. <laughs> yeah, big bad. And Said like, bad. Uh, all right. I was, uh, I was, I was just <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of like being in those situations. Like, I found myself a couple years ago in a situation like this, mm -hmm. where I was, I went to Jersey. I was with my boys and. We had a bar and we all hanging out and I've been doing the podcast by then. So like, you know, I think the podcast for me, like publicly people started to see like, oh, he's, he's a Christian. Like we didn't mm -hmm. notice before, but so now it's a different context in certain settings. Uh, and so we're drinking, we're hanging out and mm -hmm. like, I know I'm like, all right, I'm not going to overdo it. Cause I don't even like being drunk like that. Mm -hmm. But like it got to a point where I was like, okay, like I'm nice. I'm sauced. Like my man said, sauce, said he actually saucy. was with me. Sauce said was with us. Yeah, we have to find out Greek translation. For yeah, sure. that's, you gotta find the uh, the Long Island. Yeah, that's the Long Island. Uh, <laughs> that's the. Uh, but yeah, and then like they started asking me questions about like Christianity mm. and stuff, mm -hmm. and I was on point enough, but like you know how the word says like. Uh, you shoot i think i had pulled up uh walking wisdom toward outsiders making the best use of the time let right. your speech always be gracious seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person colossians four five six mm. so like in those moments i had to i didn't like the idea of like oh let me get myself together yeah i should be there yeah so yeah, when yeah. i'm always witnessing the people but it was like Oh, let me splash some water on my face. Now yeah. you, now we, now I gotta, yeah. now I gotta witness. Yeah. Bef when before it was like, what you not witnessing right now? Mm. Right, you know. Yeah. And that, that for me in that night was like, the drinking was like, nah, you sh really shouldn't be. Right. Yeah, become all things to all people oh, to win yeah. some, but you ain't gotta, you know, what I mean, have three or yeah. four drinks though. Yeah. Which, which sounds to me because, and, and you've heard me say this often about other things where now. Oftentimes we talk about witnessing and it's like, oh, me going out and saying something yeah. to somebody about Jesus, where our life is supposed to be yeah. a witness. Like right. everything that we do, if I say nothing and you observe me, something about me mm -hmm. should stand out different and not different because I'm weird, just because different because like the spirit of God, the in spirit you. of God is yeah. in me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I found myself where I avoid like just going to bars or something like that just hanging out mm -hmm. now is there anything in wrong with it no maybe mm -hmm. but no but i've oftentimes found myself when i was just out just blending in mm -hmm. like nobody knows who i am mm -hmm. 
that's where God like puts me on the spot. And like, yeah, I get the witness to somebody, but it's more of a conviction for me. Like, dude, you knew you wasn't supposed like, to be here. Like, yeah. what, what, what uh, you doing here? I see. Yeah, <laughs> I yep. see. I see. Man. So like I said, this topic it seems basic and easy, but it's yeah. it's some some levels to it and some depth to it. Uh and I think that everyone if you it, mm. everyone has to make that decision for themselves. Yes, Christian, you can drink. Yeah. But should you drink? Yeah. You gotta yeah. go to sleep asking that question. Right. I personally think here's the barometer. Mm-hmm with this with drinking and any other decision that may be like a, a, a biblical gray area yeah <laughs> we have to ask ourselves how is what i'm doing bringing glory to jesus mm. yeah right 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 and if you answer two answers well it's not mm -hmm. or i don't know then you probably want to side with like maybe i just shouldn't do it mm -hmm. yeah amen you know, and that's because, you know, this this should we drink? Should we buy expensive cars? Should we live? And yeah. like all it's, it's the same thing. So, mm -hmm. Right. Some of the stuff it isn't a matter of right or wrong more than yeah. it is. Is it going to be a distraction yeah. from bringing glory to Jesus? And right. that's and, what it boils down. And to. how much of this stuff do y'all think is just like us trying to hold on to the old man? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all it ever is. Is, well, is that that's yeah, all it ever is. What it is. I want to be okay with being a little bit of me, yeah, old me, and yeah. like mixed. It's the story that he's having with the yeah, because yeah. yeah, he's telling you you don't need to drink. Yeah, if yeah. you want that vibe that you was feeling, you don't yeah. need to drink. Like you're not gonna die if you don't have. It. <laughs> well, you make me think about. Um, I guess it's like a related question, right? Like now that the legalization of marijuana is underway. Mm -hmm. Like you now, know? wow! Yeah, we're supposed to follow the laws of the land. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Like Jesus said, follow the laws of the land. Of church, so. like yeah, <laughs> like no. <You> know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so it kind of comes dude. back to all of this again. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like yeah, well, okay, you you can. You, you have know, smoking but... paint parties. You know, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> New incense at the yeah. altar. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Different fragrance in there now. <laughs> that was a that that, that was a dig uh, at all of the sip and paint Christians, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so shade yeah. no shade. I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's it's man, it's walking like like you were talking about earlier today. Like it's not an easy walk; it's a narrow path. Yeah, mm. and we have to mm. pray for each other that that God keep us on the narrow path. I'm not gonna get into what that means, but like right. you know because we we got this flesh that wants to drink and you want Absolutely. another one like somebody commented uh i think was uh uh waiting for him patiently mm -hmm. um she was like if one leads to 10 then you should refrain altogether yeah you know yeah because that's what your flesh wants like right i'll yes. confess right now when we was over here <laughs> I was drinking and then I was like, yeah. dang, I shouldn't have drank that much, dude. Like, yeah. what was I doing? Yeah, but it was too. the fun time. Yeah, yeah man, it was fun. like, nah. Nah. Yeah, I had a blast. It wasn't cool. It but was the, fun at the time. But but I realized I that I shouldn't have drank that much when they gave me the microphone. They gave me a microphone and asked me to say something. And I was like, man, I'm not sober minded at all right now. I was See, so this is far why the from Lord sober. didn't allow you all to invite me to this party. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't have uh we had no apostle hey. here while yeah, we trying to Bishop have fun, man. Like, to judge us. We ain't want to be judged. Woo, that's, that's what y'all get for not inviting me to your hand us over. <laughs> oh, that's silly. Oh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, yeah, thank you to wait patiently for him. Thank you, Ama. Thank you, Cedric. Thank yes. you, uh, It's B Doc. Uh, thank you, Mill329. He said, Does the Bible speak against drinking or does it speak against drunkenness? We covered that, man. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you to lovely Lessa. Drinking is fine, she said, but overindulgence is the problem. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. And she says, Self control, self control. So, yo, we appreciate all of you guys. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that this uh, clears some things up if you had questions or just reinforced something that you already knew. Uh, and, yeah, anything else? I say, guys? G, where can they find you yeah. at? Oh, you already said it. Just Greg, Instagram. Just Greg. Uh, but other places, too, uh, <laughs> like the Lighthouse. <laughs> you can find me at the Lighthouse on the Pike at 5904 Marble Pike, District Heights, Maryland, zip code 20747. I'm also yeah. just just Greg on Instagram and uh, Gregory Wartlow on Facebook. Amen. Amen. 
All, All right, right y'all. y'all. Catch us next time. Later.